Development Authority of the Regional Manager for Southwestern Region. So, as regards the milk consumption, generally in the country, our consumption is, is, is improving, but we are not yet there uh, compared to uh, what is required or what is at least recommended by the World Health Organization, which is 200 liters at least per person per year. So ours is still down around 60, 64 liters per person. Martin de Jong from the Netherlands. I'm the project manager of two dairy development projects in southwest Uganda, which is the Tide project aiming for the medium large scale farmers, but also on ISDAP, which is integrated smallholder dairy program, which is aiming at smallholder farmers having three to six acres of land and multiple crops of income resources. The theme is from cattle keepers to dairy farmers. Because we see a lot of farmers in, um, in the Barara region, they have a lot of land, 60 acres up to 4 or 5 square, square miles, and they're keeping few cattle. Uh, it's, and the cattle are not for productivity. So we try to transfer them from keeping cattle to dairy farmers, uh, farming as a business. So we do activities to intensify milk production by improving the, the pastures, by doing paddocking, uh, rainwater harvesting, but also um, uh, tick control and uh, also a quality-based payment system because in southwest Uganda you have a lot of milk processors like Amos, Pearl, each need of one million liter of milk a day, so total two million for two factories and a lot of small ones, so, but there's no milk available. Then tight is coming to its end after eight years. Uh, Tide was also focused at sector transformation, so also whatever intervention we do to also bring it to the national government. But also the Netherlands Embassy, who is financing uh, Tide, said you are forgetting the smallholder farmers. And we said we don't forget the smallholder farmers in Tide, we don't focus, because we work with 130 cooperatives. They said, they said the Embassy asked can you make a special program for the smallholder farmers. Like the large scale farmers, like they have five eggs in one basket. So even the dairy farmer, you specialize, you have foot and mouse disease or you have low prices, the business is, is not so good. With a smallholder farmer, they may have three acres, but they have maybe one cow tied to a banana tree, they have banana, they have coffee, they have climbing beans, they have sweet potatoes, they have vegetables. So they have five eggs in five different baskets. So if something prices go down or we have disease in banana or disease in the cows, we still have other income, so we call it resilience to shocks, shocks of climate, because we have climate change. You cannot change that, the climate change, you can only adopt. So that's why we're also introducing new varieties of, uh, of forages who are more climate resistant, drought resistant. So it's really focusing at the income at the family level. Tight is more about business, sector transformation, smallholder, project is more improving livelihood, uh, of the smallholder farmers. Maximum six, six acres, but we, we visited or we interviewed about 20,000 farmers and we found that most smallholder farmers have between half an acre up to three acres. They have one of two cows, they have uh, some, some, some goats, some chicken running around, and on the three acres they have five, six different income resources. So it's very much producing initially for the family and whatever the surplus they sell either in the village or they sell to the, to the markets. So it's really family based. Uh, the family farms uh, is, is actually owned by the farmer, by the men, uh, but also the females have a big uh, activities of the work, but also the youth. So we're looking at, at family systems. breed which was given by the local government but by uh, the agricultural department through NADS was wanting as you know more often than not they tell us they they heighten the, 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 the percentage of the breed usually because of what you know is in the country corruption they say they have given you 50 percent whereas they are giving you only 20 percent so this is exactly what happened so what my brother there is saying that there is a need
control um, government or even a local government and even if they need to be our partners, the, 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 the NGOs, to start giving them, uh, how do we call them in English, Obisito, how do we call them in English? The mayor of the city, Fort Potro Tourism City, has a fully-fledged milk plant, which is in the middle of town. But unfortunately, the, the, the organization, the society that are dealing with it, have got this um, feeling that they can only deal with bigger farmers in order to sustain the plant. And believe you me, they are failing. Yekam Garama is my name. I'm the district chairperson of Nyangabu. Nyangabu. Mm. Uh, Nyangabu, if you were to estimate, like in, in your district, how big, how big are these uh, small? Okay, like what? On estimate, the number of these small holder farmers. Yeah, basing on on the SNV program, we are only we only piloted. In, 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 in four sub counties, that is SNOV. But in the general picture, the smallholder farmers are many, over 1,200. Okay.